Good morning, good day, and good evening. I definitely didn't just restart the recording three seconds ago. We're just going to ignore that happened entirely. How you doing, EG? Welcome back to the show. I'm doing well. I'm glad to be back. You have a much nicer looking camera this time. Yes, yes. Thank you. Which I, hopefully... that, that Logitech was just not working out. Like it, it's functional, and if you're gonna like, if you set it up well with like, you know, decent lighting, you can get it to look, you know, passable. Not what, not like what you're seeing right now on the uh, on your on your side on Discord, but you can get it to look passable. But if you can use something a bit nicer, you know, something nice is definitely gonna be uh, definitely gonna be nice. Yeah, it's it's a little janky to get this camera working. It's the same camera I use for Open EG, but mm. here we are. As long as it doesn't go crazy with the autofocus, which You're saying I think it's we a have under control. Sony camera before I didn't catch which one you said it was. It's a Sony Alpha Six Thousand. Oh, so it's just like it's a it's the, a little the, ent the entry level one that a lot of people go with. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a pretty good price. It was a black. It was like a. Amazon deal from ah, a few yeah. years ago. Oh, like I thought you meant you had got it like recently. Uh, no, I've actually had this thing for a while. Hmm. Okay. Uh, there we go. I was trying to fix up my overlay. I didn't actually have my browser overlay, so now people can see your channel. Hey, you got... <laughs> no, I don't want to autoplay your video. <laughs> <laughs> I see you got the, uh, the a video out about uh, open source Linux games, and that was why you are. Uh, that's right. You were like, hey, I'll, I'll, let's, let's do another episode. You're like, let's just talk about open yeah. source games. That's right. Yeah, December is a, is kind of a special month for me for the channel. Mm. Because, oh, four years ago? It was quite mm. a long time ago. I declared December on my channel as open source appreciation month. Okay. I made a video about it and then did nothing with it <laughs> until this year. Yo. And I've, I've, I've wanted to make that top five top ten whatever video that type of open source game video yeah yep. for a long yep. time and this year i finally said i'm just gonna do it do you that's have it we're doing it zenotic okay let's let's have a look what you got on this list let's uh, take a look yeah we could talk about them so i played you, a lot of these games i've pl i've played that many like i i know of most of them you got zenotic on here Valor and Valorant's a very good game zero yeah. ad Super Tux mm -hmm. Car and Battle for West North. Mm. Okay. Good games. Zero AD and Battle of West... Like, people have asked me to play those games. Neither of them are really um, my style. I've never been into, like, the the RTS or the, like... Um, what would you call it? Like, the World Sim? What, how would you... What, what, what do we call, like, Battle for West North? Because it's a different style of game to Zero mm. AD. I don't know what you'd call. I'm I'm sure that there's a a term for I'm that sure style of turn-based game. I mean, I guess it's just like a turn-based strategy game. Like it, but yeah, more in the style of something like it seems like it's somewhere in between like an RTS and a game like Civilization. Mm, it's it's a lot like Civilization. Mm -hmm. Um if you're familiar with OG uh, Heroes of Might and Magic, mm -hmm. or in the video I mentioned Disciples. It's a it, the the turn based gameplay is a bit like Disciples though. In Disciples, when you fight battles, you like zoom in mm -hmm. on the characters, and then it's it's almost like a like a, a Magic the Gathering style. If I remember, it's been a while. But in Battle of Wesnoth, it's like turn based, and you move your you recruit units, and then mm -hmm. you move your units, and then when you go to battle, you pick their different attacks, and then it's like a dice roll. But okay. the the mechanics of the game are really self aware, which is kind of cool. And you can choose different AI rule sets, and it, there's a lot of configurability to do. But um, that's not normally my style of game. Like I don't mm -hmm. play Civilization. I've played it, but that turn based games just aren't really my thing. But mm -hmm. I must have played hours of Wesnoth. I I could not stop playing it. It was really fun. It seems like a interesting game. But I yeah, just, it, it's just not something I've ever really, like... I I, I've play, I think the only, only, like, RTS sort of style game I've played before... I played, like, Age of Empires 2 as a kid. I played it on mm -hmm. the PS2, which is not the best way to play that game. But I've, I've played oh the game to some extent. Um, I've always been more into, like... 
you know, more... I, I think the, the main thing I played as a kid was, like, platformers. Um, platformers mm-hmm. a lot of, like, action games. Um, yeah. Action what? or puzzle games or what have you. Uh, definitely yeah, what, not puzzle games. Not, puzzle games were never really huh? my jam. Um, hmm. Why is my camera broken on OBS? You know, we'll fix this after. <laughs> we'll finish the battle of Wes nothing. I'll fix it. We'll cut back into it. Um, yeah, no, this this seems like a neat game. Um, yeah. I, I would hmm. recommend giving it a try. I think that there's there's two different styles of gameplay. Mm-hmm. Actually, there's three for Wes Noth. Um, they're all the same, basically, but it's nuanced. So you have one that is uh, like the campaigns where you have a hero and then yeah, you yeah. recruit units and then you go and capture the villages, make a bit of money, make more units, and then go and, and beat whatever the challenge is. Yeah, yeah. You can build a um, custom scenario that's the same sort of thing. Or you can play uh, other campaigns, give you units, mm. and that's it. Like no, no places to recruit. So it's more like you have to manage your single hero and 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 get people along the way and it's more story based and that one's really cool Mm. but then there's also other scenarios where it's like king of the hill where you and another player or ai try to hold a single location and enemies come to attack you Mm. so um yeah if you're if you're not feeling the whole like recruiting thing and trying to manage your units and your money then you could do it that way so there's a few different ways of playing the game Hmm. it's good I have to give that one a shot. Like, if I was gonna try that, it definitely wouldn't be in my um, like in my my free time. Like, in my mm-hmm. free time, I'm mainly playing things like RPGs. If I was gonna try it out, I know some people have asked me to do it as like a stream game. Same with things like um, mm-hmm. Zero AD. Just you know, yep. see how it's gonna go. Oh, camera's working now. We good? Hey, 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 there okay, we go. Cool. I can actually pay attention. To- <laughs> I probably pay attention to what you're saying now. <laughs> um, we love we love Linux. I don't know what happened there because it was working before, and then when I like brought my overlay over, it just died for. I I, I don't I don't know why it just died. Um, because I I've been it thinking happens. of bringing back in some form the um the the main channel stream because I've just been streaming on the gaming channel doing you mm. know whatever else right now. I think we're playing. Me and someone else are doing a Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire um, playthrough, uh, like randomizer, and I'm also doing a Kingdom Hearts playthrough. But I've been wanting to bring back, I, I, like, the only reason I stopped doing it is because like I was, I felt like I was spending too much time working, and it's just like I want to do other things that are not working. So I just sort of got in the way of that because I, you know, have my day job and all that. So. When you're doing like 60, 70 hour weeks, it, it does tend to get, mm. uh, you know, a little bit much sometimes. But if I was yeah, going to try this bit. out, um, yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that. What would you say is like the best way to get started with a game like this? Like, is there a tutorial oh. in the game? Is there like the, a wiki that I should read? Well, I, so what I would recommend for mm. you specifically, Mr. Streamer, is mm. I got... I, I rediscovered a lot of these. I, I knew about a lot of these games when I got into Linux because, mm-hmm. like we talked about in the last one, I got in because I was I was a uh, I was trying to get away from the Windows world and yeah, I was interested yeah. in everything Linux had to offer. And a lot of these games, they were pretty unrefined at the time, so I was like, these are cool, but let's move on. Mm. So I moved on, and I became reacquainted with them many years later. It was from a live stream, and it, I think it was before distro delves but it was around when it was getting started so i was trying to figure out what i wanted to do with live streams and i was like hey i'm gonna go on the the snap store Mm -hmm. so this was early ubuntu snap store and i'm just gonna find a whole bunch of i'm gonna go through the games section and i'm just gonna try out tons of games live on the channel with people and they could tell me how everything works and that's how I rediscovered a lot of these games. Mm. So uh, for you specifically, if, like if you're going to be streaming, people ask you to do it. I would just do like a, a, a medley stream. Like, all right, we're just going to go through maybe FlatHub and we're going to try out just like a bunch of games. And mm-hmm. if there's mm-hmm. some cool ones, we'll save them for another stream. But if nothing else, you and the viewers can go through and check out all these games and people know them. They're like, oh, do this, do that. That's, so I, actually, that's how I would do it. That's a good idea, actually. The one game I'm really not fun. going, the, there's one game I'm definitely not going back to, no matter how many people ask me to play it again, and that's Mind History. If you 
played that before. Uh, okay. Do you, Somebody recommended that recently, actually. It, I thought it is, that it looked cool. No, it, it's a really cool game. It, it's Yeah? The problem is you have to have... <laughs> it, it's one of those games where you need to understand what's going on. So... Oh. Um, basically, the idea uh. is that you're gathering resources and you're building up factories and pipelines mm-hmm. while also, you know, defending your territory from the enemies coming right. in. So it's like, it's a tower defense with, uh, I guess it's a resource management game with a tower defense attached to it. Um, mm-hmm. but it sort of goes very heavy into that resource management that, uh, that, factory building it's very similar to something like factorio um right or you know you could it's not as complex as as dwarf fortress it's somewhere between you know Mm -hmm. it's somewhere between age of empires and dwarf fortress leading more towards the dwarf fortress side where you have to worry about all of this crazy stuff and doing that on stream when you're learning the game it doesn't Mm. at least for me make for a great experience because you need to have a good understanding of how to build up these factories, and I just didn't have that. It's it's one of those games where you want to have the wiki open on another tab to have any idea of what you really need to be doing. Like, the, the basic resources, of, you know, that's pretty simple, but when you start getting to anything remotely complex, then it starts to fall apart very quickly. Hmm. Oh. Uh. He's gone. Hello. Was that, was that me that disconnected? I don't know. I'm not sure um, what happened there. Now the video way out of sync. Uh, hmm, let me. It seems you want fine me to try right to now. Re- no, it seems fine right now. Whoa, we're like probably five to ten seconds uh, oh, out of sync. I now it's desynced. Okay, wait. Say oh. something. Hello. Now it's back. Okay. I don't know what happened that, there. That, I think that was Discord because I have my, my data up, up here and like nothing changed on my end. It also could be my connection. I did. Uh, I was playing uh, FF14 earlier. I did DC. So it's possibly, oh. I don't know, possibly my side. Um, I don't know. But. Yeah. Ga- games where you have to like focus on what is happening mm. like re- like especially if you don't know it super well like yep, it yep. sounds like that is mm, it those can be tricky i'll send you a the uh link to the mind industry website it's available on steam as well but it's also just open source oh. so you can just you know download it um yeah here we go but y- you'll see very <laughs> quickly that. like i'll just put a picture on the screen right now for anyone just uh watching the video when you start getting to some of the complex stuff, like, if very, you know, you can start to see how the it gets complex quickly. Yeah, that, that honestly, that's not my style of game. Mm, it's, mm. it's a little too involved. I don't know. I, I think it could be fun to play on stream for people. Yeah, but yeah. For, for EG to play? Mm, probably not. Not mm, my style. Mm. Yeah. But, um... It, yeah, and that's why at the beginning of the that top five video, I was like, the, these are my perception of the best yeah. in the in the open source world. Not my favorites. Mm-hmm. Doesn't necessarily sit around and play these games, but um, objectively, these are very solid games. Mm, no, that, that makes sense. I think a game that would be a lot more approachable for me would be something... It still involves a lot more thinking than I would normally be used to, but a game like Zero AD... Yeah, it zero D is about as as basic of a of an Age of Empires like RTS as it gets. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. There there are things that I don't love about it, mm, but mm. It, it's it's just an RTS. It's fine. The I've I've tried to play network like local LAN network with mm. friends, and it the the way that the network is is looking for um like the latency or desync, it's really strict. So yep. if anybody on the network starts to fall behind, it freezes the game for everyone. Ooh. And we, we could not get... I mean, we tried for several hours to get like a working play session. It wouldn't work. That's... But technically it should work, but uh, we couldn't get Zero AD to <laughs> work. the best kind it of working. Been fun. <laughs> yeah, I was like, all right, let's build... Oh, it froze again. 
All mm. right, now we're good. Let's be up. Oh, I froze again. That's what it was like. This is still not the sort of like game I would generally play, but I could certainly see myself, you know, badly playing zero AD and getting some sort of getting some sort of entertainment out of doing so, rather than just like I said we, with my industry where I'm just like flailing about not really sure where to go next at least here it's like okay i've played age of empires i have a general idea you want to get your people and you want to like build up your army and get the resources and all that like that makes sense to me i can work with this i'm gonna lose very quickly but i can work with this yeah just set the computer on easy and i think there's <laughs> don't tell there's anyone it's on easy <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I mean you can turn the computer on passive and just have it build. Like there oh, yeah. there is there's a certain zen to just like picking a cool looking map and mm. building a cool looking city. Like I used to do that in, in Warcraft and stuff. Like mm -mm. I'd focus on building my city and making it defendable so that when the computer did come to attack it, we could defend it and stuff. Mm. But I was focused on like building a really cool looking you know, like base of operations. I, I've never been very good at RTSs. I just like building stuff. I've the never units look cool. Like <laughs> I've never actually played. Uh, <laughs> I've never played Warcraft. That's that's something that I, it was a little bit before my time, and I just yeah, like I, it's just not something I've gone back to. Yeah, I like. I have a bit of a hot take. I think mm. Warcraft Two was fantastic one of one of the best if not the best rts i've ever played mm, mm. i thought warcraft 3 was not good <laughs> like coming from warcraft 2 mm -hmm. warcraft 3 had a very different feel a very different focus i didn't like the hero mechanics mm -hmm. i just like it, it was different and it, it appealed to a different audience you know mm -hmm. it was a different blizzard like yeah it was yep. the same blizzard but it was it was like capitalizing on the success of their franchises and they yep. went all in on what people wanted and that's just not what i wanted i thought it was just really like warcraft 2 was just really cool rts the expansion mm. was cool it had awesome lore and then it just went in a different direction and it lost me mm. hmm. but um yeah zero ad though i <sighs> maybe this has to go on the stream list as well but it's it's fun. It, it's easy to get. Like I, it's in Flat Hub. It's mm. huge. It's like a gig and a half. I think it's a really large game. But um, those are games that I haven't played. One that I have, and I certainly have a uh, quite a bit of experience with, is Zenotic. Zenotic. I am. Yeah. I do really like Zenotic. Zenotic is very fun. Yeah. yeah. It's it's it's. It's not my style of game. Mm -hmm. uh, I get bored of the gameplay very fast. Not a big FPS player? I I love F FPS, mm. but the run and gun, the Twitch-based, like, everybody's going light speed and there's yeah. just, like, explosions. That's not my style at all. It's just... You know what's funny is I like... I love chaos. I embody chaos in a lot of ways. But <laughs> Zenotic is chaos in a first-person shooter, and it's not... It, it's just too much. Like, I don't know. When I recorded the footage, I, I was creating a lot of custom maps, like okay. custom maps, custom matches, but they were capture the flag. They were ca they were like different scenarios yeah, that were yeah. more interested and more interesting than just like a team death match where everybody's just shooting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I limited the weapons so that I could always get the weapon that that like I think I use a machine gun most of the time because that yeah. actually feels really good. Mm -hmm. Some of the other weapons are just like I don't know. It's Zenotic's not not my type of game. I played it to get footage, and I'll probably not play it again <laughs> yeah when it <laughs> being a game that's you know based on quake you've got the whole like you gotta lead your shots and that like i when you're not used to that i can see why the machine gun would certainly be uh a little bit more approachable like you can yeah, get some really cool style. shots with like with the rpg and the grenade launcher but yeah it can be a bit uh bit rough to actually uh to actually hit anything <laughs> when i one of the matches that i joined there's footage in the video of it it's like a strange capture the flag skiing match hmm. but there was uh imagine dragons playing <laughs> on the server radio and people were just vibing <laughs> sometimes you'd spawn and just like immediately become gibbs or mm -hmm. jibs or whatever i mean it was just like it was wild mm -hmm. and i could see that community aspect of it 
Like, what are you going to do after school or something? I'm going to hop on Zenotic and ski and listen to music with these randos. Mm. Like, I, that that actually sounds kind of fun. I get the appeal. Out of all the um, the open source games, like, Zenotic has a surprisingly active community. Yeah, like, it's it, it's an easy game to get into, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, you download it, the server browser is right there. Some of them, I mean, the names catch you, and then you join in, and people are just goofing around. Yeah, I mean, it can. It's 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 a good game to get into. It's just not for me. <laughs> I did get the back. I think the last time I streamed the game, I did. Was it wait? Was it Zenotic or no? I think it was Zenotic. I got the attention of the devs because I was hmm. trying to push the limit on how big you could make a server. Oh man, how many people did you get in there? I uh, know. I filled it with bots just to see what would happen. You can. Oh it, man. You can run with like two. Uh, I think like 128 people, and it functions not well, but it functions, and that's, you know, kind of surprising. It's chaos, yeah, and everyone's dying instantly. Well, now the new the engine that it's using is like an advanced modern version of the quake engine Mm. and when i was doing Mm. my research i couldn't get a good answer when they say quake engine are they literally talking about quake one or is it whatever was the last open source quake engine so like quake four quake three or whatever um i guess gold source which is half-life was based on quake one's engine and then uh the source that we know today like the source engine that we know today including the engine that apparently Apex Legends uses, is based on the Source engine, which is based on OG Quake's engine, which is kind of mind-blowing to think about. Uh-huh. But, yeah, I, I read that uh, Gabe said, Gabe Newell said that they, that it was, ba- that the engine was based on Quake's engine, but they rewrote basically all of it. So, I mean, like, I, I don't know what that means exactly. But it it's fascinating to think about. But it, it also... It shows you how much the the I guess the world at large leverages open source technology. You know, I'm just like the, it, I id software open sourced the Quake engine, and everybody grabbed it, and then it, whoo, it just became a huge thing. That's what open source is all about. I'm having a look through it right now, and it seems like it's based on that original open source Quake engine of Quake One, but it, it would be That's like wild. heavily modified. Um, at this point because i think yeah because it says it's based on the dark places engine which is based on the quake engine because the original quake engine was known to be like really buggy um so it's been modified over the years and it's you know at at a more usable point than it was back in 97 right now if you read that on Wikipedia, mm. Wikipedia is uh, inaccurate. If you go to Zenotics's Git, like the Zenotic GitLab, uh-huh. you'll see that they have the they have a repo for Zenotic the game and a repo for the game engine, which is not the engine that is listed on Wikipedia. It's called um, it's a fork of GTK Radiant or something like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's a very strange issue. I would love to make a video talking about all of these open source game engines because i i find it so fascinating mm, mm. there's all these different game and render engines that are all open source a panda 3d i did a video on panda 3d ah, okay i mean yeah what'd you find i'm seeing on their github there's a there's the net rating engine and then also the dark places engine i was mentioning just before okay so it seems like they are using that dark places engine I presume mm. it's modif. Okay, no, this is just a mirror of it. So maybe they've made some patches to it, or maybe it's just a mirror. Um, but maybe, yeah, they're definitely they using. It. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely using that Quake One engine though. That that is definitely uh, definitely the case. Uh, as for Net Radiant, mm. I what is Net Radiant? Open source cross platform level. Oh, NetRadiant is a level editor. So that's a level editor for the Quake Engine games. That's mm. okay. Right. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Because it didn't make any sense that there would be like two separate engines there. But then, it, <laughs> but then it's confusing because some things will list Quake Engine and Dark Places as if they are 
two wholly separate things. Yeah, it, it's. I'm not exactly sure how it's all connected. But it's really impressive what they're able to do. Yeah, Xenotic is a really good looking game. Out, like, out of the open source space, it's one of the better looking ones for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I looked at. I, there's a lot of. There, there's a quite a number of first person shooters like that, mm -hmm. really fast arena based. Yep, and I went yep, with yep. Xenotic mainly because it just looks so good. What the title the... screen is iffy, but the <laughs> game itself looks solid. What other arena shooters are there? Um, oh, so there's Xenotic. There's yep. I, I, I trim a trim something. There's like aliens and uh. One side is aliens, one side is humans, and it's it, you okay. build like turrets and stuff. Never really played it. Yep. And there's a fork of that one, I think. There's uh, Alien Arena, Warsaw. I mean, there's tons. Yeah, I think that there's a section for these on Flathub. There are lots of first person shooters. I. Yeah, I didn't know about that, uh, any of those ones. Because the only other, like, FPS that comes to mind is Urban Terror. Urban Terror, Red Eclipse, I but think. But Urban Terror is a, is a um, maybe a fork. Urban Terror is more in line with Counter Strike as opposed mm -hmm. to Quake. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also based on the Quake Three engine. <laughs> yeah, there. Are, I mean, it, it was open source. Mm -hmm. so, have you like why not? Have you played Urban Terror before? Um. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I did not like it. Oh? It was it was like it was like it was like Counter Strike one point six. Yep, yep, yep. If if they just like feature froze it there. Mm. I, I mean I mean <laughs> that appeals to some people, just not me. I, I think for me, the reason why I have such a uh such a fond memory of Urban Terror is this is I, I was playing this game before I knew what open source was, before I knew anything like that. At my at my high school, we were all given um, MacBooks. And as you would expect from high school students given MacBooks, they're going to try to find games to play on them. And we would just keep moving games every time the uh, the IT staff caught on to what we were playing. So we started with <laughs> um, Halo Combat Evolved. Then we right. went to COD 4. Uh, hmm. And eventually made our way to Assault Cube. Assault Cube okay. is a it's a very similar game to um, to Urban Terror. Is that Sourbrotten? Uh, is that, that Assault Cube Two or something? That sounds correct. Yeah, no, I, I think that is. Yeah, I think that is the same thing. Yeah. Um. And then eventually we made our way to Urban Terror. They caught on to Urban Terror very quickly because the game's called Urban Terror. Um, <laughs> but... No, so it... Red X search and bam. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it. We played this game a lot. Hmm. But they're actually doing a, um, a remake of this game in a new engine now. I... Want to say that like remaking it Unreal or something? Urban Terror. Yeah, I think the Urban Terror. Uh, I want to say that that's what they're doing. Urban hmm. Terror. Uh, Urban Terror. Yeah, they're remaking it in UE five. Oh my gosh! Which, when did they announce that? Uh, it it's been a project. They started on UE four. It's been a project for like four years at this point. Oh, uh, it's one of those. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it's going to take a I, I, while I, I, to rebuild the entire game. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know... It's, it's like Zero AD has got the, uh, that reputation of, like, the eternal alpha. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. Four years in development with nothing... Like, is, the, I, is there a beta to play? Like, that's mm, a long mm. time. That's a really long time. Yep, yep, yep. No, I, I, I get it. it. It makes sense. But, like... They they wanted to move past just being you know Counter Strike one point six. Bring it up to be a bit more of a because you know the the way the game looked is a bit it can be off putting to someone who doesn't know what to expect from a um from an open source game. Like 
going into it, like, knowing that, like, you know, we know what these games are going to be like, but from an mm. outsider's perspective, if you want to get more people interested in the game, it doesn't hurt to bring it um, a bit more modern looking. Uh, let's see if I can find... Is this it? No, this is... So are you gonna... ah, yeah, are you going to play Urban Terror on stream sometime? I I wanted to do so ages back. I just didn't get around to it. Um, now you got to do it, man. I know I should. I'll send you a link to this. This is the um, the UE Five remake. Um, here we go. <laughs> Play it. Oh. Urban Terror Five. Here we go. And just like with the modern lighting uh, that we have available now, like even just using the old models, it looks considerably better. Hmm. You know, when you just have, you know, the, your old, the old lighting that you, a, an engine like the Quake 3 engine would support, you know, there's going to be severe limitations in what you can, like, actually do with that. Mm hmm But, um... Yeah, especially for a game like that. Huh? Mm hmm Well, have you seen, uh, I think... Is it the Quake 3 ray tracing demos? Yeah, I I don't really keep up with like graphics technology and stuff. Like I mean it's it's cool, sure. I but I've seen side by sides of like ray tracing without and all this other stuff and I'm like I just you know, I I'm not interested in fidelity. That's like fair. as far as like how nice can we get this? Like I don't really care. I just want it to look cool. I no, found I get that, that there are certain games that have an aesthetic that mm. is unrefined versus mm. a game that's just like, look at all this new technology. It's like, I guess that's cool, but I live in real life. I don't want to go into a game that looks like real. I mean, I guess I, I get the appeal. Mm -hmm. I just don't want that. I want to get into a game that looks and feels like a game. That's fair. No, I, no, I get that as well. I just like, I like cool things being done with tech and lighting is one of those cool things that's, uh, that's improving really quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. It seems like ray tracing is the is the thing right yeah, now. We yeah. gotta add ray tracing and everything. I wonder what the next thing will be. That honestly, I don't know. Like, there is some really well, I th I think what we're at right now is a lot of optimization stuff. Like, I don't because you said you weren't keeping up with graphics tech. Uh, you probably haven't seen any of the stuff about. Um, the new updates to Unreal Engine 5 with 5.1. Um, so, do you know how in traditional games, if you, like, back away from an object, you'll notice that it, like, suddenly jumps between levels of detail? Yeah. So, like, you'd, you'd back away from a tree, it's, like, a fully rendered tree, and then it's, like, less rendered, and, you know, keep backing away, it eventually becomes just, like, mm -hmm. a PNG on your screen. Um, yeah. This, this is the way that we would traditionally handle... Um, going away from an object so it's not... Like, you would have more in your view, so you'd want to make it less detailed so you don't have to render as much. Um, mm -hmm. But with Unreal Engine 5.1, rather than doing that as, like, a sudden jump, it... I, I don't understand at all how the math works behind it, but they can cut up the object into, like, not polygons, it's some, like, new thing they've come up with, and then... Mm procedurally lower the quality as you back away. So you can render these giant scenes. Like, one of the demos that I saw was this forest with, like, a 100,000 trees all mm. rendered as if they are, like, as as if they are at their full, um, full quality level. And it looks hmm. insanely good. Like, I think that's the next forefront we're going with. It's making games run better on the hardware that is available because you know you can only raise up your fidelity so much i'm sure there's going to be some new big breakthrough uh on that front as well but yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, my presumption is that it's making things run better is where we're going to next i that i think that that's a a logical direction to take you know i i hear I hear that. I hear the level of detail stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a part of me that is just so jaded 
And I'm like, that is really cool. Mm -mm. But it is up to the developer to implement that and implement it properly. Well, the thing so with, they can... I was going to say, the thing with Unreal Engine, like this is, why un, this is why a lot of devs are just going with Unreal Engine because it's just a toggle. Like it just mm. does it. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, I, I think, so going, uh, so I, I am jaded because I, I, I used to be more into this stuff, but mm -hmm. then it's like all these new engines and stuff come out, you play the game, they look like crap. It's like, well, what happened to all these new advances? Well, they didn't yeah. implement them. Like what? So if you have a, an engine, I, Unreal Engine is probably my favorite graphics engine. I just mm -hmm. really like all the games that have un that use Unreal. I, I'm in love with their aesthetic. Like I'm really into Arc right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Arc mm -hmm. is just beautiful compared to rust which feels very similar rust uses unity i think unity is just like really it works really well for certain things mm -hmm. but for like 3d graphics first person shooter i mean seven days to die again it's hideous like i it, it just it works for the aesthetic the 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 bad aesthetic of unity works for seven days because seven days is supposed to be like a horror game yeah with yeah. rust it just it feels so uncanny and just weird anyway Going back to Unreal, mm. if they build something like that into the engine where they just said, like, flip it on and the engine handles the level of detail, the, the developers don't have to code algorithms that they get, they don't want to do, so they, then they don't do it. That's, that is the way. That's yeah. how you progress forward. Because developers, you know, developers are lazy. And I mean, the, the, the people paying the developers are equally lazy. So mm. they're like, we could make this look way better, but it's going to cost a lot more money and developer yeah, time. Yeah. And they're like, we're not going to do that. We'll make it a patch that will never come. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. On, uh, Unity's in a really weird spot right now with like, it's always been that like, you know, the indie game engine, that like beginner game engine. But with Unreal... I don't get that. But with Unreal being like free to use for these these like smaller projects i think it's like it below it's below fifty thousand or five hundred thousand. you don't pay anything i can't oh, remember wow. which it is um do you have yeah, to use the epic store or something weird like that i don't believe so i hmm. i'm pretty sure you don't um but it's in this weird position where like if i was a new game developer and i didn't know any engine whatsoever I don't mm -hmm. see any world right now where it makes sense to pick Unity. Now, the Un like the Unity asset store is obviously like really useful, but mm -hmm. Unreal has its own thing as well. Like they they all do, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all the even Godot has one, but it's like the the level of the quality of items mm. in the store or whatever i think is is kind of the defining factor yeah yeah so like godot has a bunch of stuff but it's all just like you know people samples yeah so yeah, yeah. they're not high enough quality to use in a game but like going back to rust it, you know og rust the original rev one was mm -hmm. all basically all unity store assets that they mm -hmm. built into a game like that's honestly that's remarkable that they're able to do that i look at rust today like it started from assets from the store and mm. now it's like a big big game like that is really cool mm, 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 mm. you know that that is like i love that these assets are available and they absolutely should be um but there are some games out there that you know effectively just compile a bunch of assets together and it's just like well let's sell it out there it's not it's not any rhyme or reason for these assets. It's just taking the assets and then just flipping it out and seeing mm -hmm. what's going to happen out in the market. This was a big problem um, back in the early days of Steam Greenlight, especially when that was a project, yeah. uh, the thing that existed. It was just a lot of these Unity asset flips that mm -hmm. they weren't using the assets as placeholders. They weren't using them in a artistic way it's just cobbled together to game see jam what level stuff yeah 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 like game the, jam it yeah. totally makes sense using those assets because you know you have whatever 24 hours 72 hours whatever it is for the specific uh game jam um yeah 
but for something that's being sold commercialized yeah yeah something that's commercialized um it's fine to use them in places but when every single thing in the game is one of these assets it does uh especially mm-hmm. especially in cases where uh the developer is hiding that they are the asset flips they modify them in a certain way they use it in, in a clever way yeah you can't yeah yeah really tell yeah that there's definitely been a lot of projects out there like that but um we've kind of strayed very far off the topic of uh open source games <laughs> now we're talking about game engines these mm. aren't even open source game engines uh, another game you had on <laughs> that uh on that list there was uh was Velerin. Oh yeah, that that was another game that I had a lot of fun playing. Mm, mm. Uh, I I had to play it a lot solo to understand how it worked and get a feel for it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was I was talking to friends about like, so what is Cube World about? Like, what what am I supposed to be getting out of this? Because like, yeah. if, if you look at screenshots of Cube World, it's remarkably similar. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. the the thing that was most fascinating to me about Velrin is how little information there was on it. Like, I mean, if I was a developer and I made such a crazy looking game, mm-hmm. I mean, I, you'd want to, I, I, w- I would at least want to be like, hi, this was my idea. Um, this is really cool. And now the community's taking it. There's like nothing. It just, it just like spawned out of the ground. And I mean, if, if you people watching, if you haven't played it, it's in flat hub, it's probably in your repos just like load into it and be amazed at what this is like what the open source community is capable of nobody got paid to do this like Mm -hmm. i don't even know who the developers are i found an interview from like a year or two ago i don't even know if the guy is still on the project but it's and this is rust lang Mm -hmm. apparently nobody's made a game in rust so let's do it and 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 like i i can hear developers say that like you know developers come it's crazy ideas all the time it's actually produced stuff mm-hmm. like a playable game. It's a, it looks amazing. It runs well. Like what is going on? It's not it's so just cool. a playable game. Like, it's it plays well. Like it's not just it, playable. Um, and it's fun. Yeah, yeah. Valorant's really fun. Like mm-hmm. I I played the game for the first time like a couple of years back, and it's slowly been making progress. Like week on week. They mm-hmm. uh, changed out the flying system ages back. They added in more enemy yep. types, more bosses, more classes, like a currency system. The uh, <laughs> I, I remember playing back when they first added in merchants, and they hadn't okay. worked out pricing for things yet. So okay. you could pick up rocks off the ground, and they would sell for enough that you could just buy infinite potions. And then sell well, the potions back, and then buy the best gear in the game. <laughs> I mean, hey, look, that sounds like an AI problem. If they didn't code the AI to be smart enough to know that that's a bad deal, then hey, you know, get players getting some, get making a killing off mm-hmm. of these guys, huh? The the merchant system was interesting. It's like bartering or haggling. You're mm-hmm. like, here's these things. The thing I didn't like about it is how small the interface is. And you're yeah, having yeah. to drag and dra- drop all of these little tiny icons into this thing. And then yep, it's like, yep. the merchant likes this. Merchant doesn't like this. But everything's so small. Like, oh, the bottom the is... Oh, that wasn't there when I played it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it was... It's a novel system. It's mm-hmm. just the the... The, it, like the UI is just it needs to be revamped but the system is cool yeah yeah well UI is something that is like that's a difficult thing to do well like you can make something yeah. that functions but mm-hmm. when you have developers designing UIs you know they're going or like even just designers designing it without having a, any sort of um, QA process you're going to design it in a certain way that makes sense to you. Mm-hmm. And that may not make sense to other people that are that are seeing it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes you can really tell when a user facing piece of an application mm-hmm. or a game was co- was made by a developer <laughs> opposed to a designer. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it's it's just got that smell to it. You're like uh, but as a developer, I a lot of times I, it totally gels with me. I'm like, oh, I get what they're trying to do. I mm. understand. It's weird. I get it. But 
<laughs> they did it for a reason. I understand. A lot of when I play Seven Days, I get a lot of that. I'm like, this is so jank, but mm -hmm. I totally understand why they did it this way. But mm. it is so freaking jank. <laughs> Some games are just like that. The, the sudden they're, charm. They're doing the especially. best they can. Like there, there is definitely a charm to it. Mm -hmm. Um, but even with like, actually, what did you think of the combat in Velarin? Because that I think is um, it, 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 it was it was okay. The thing mm. that I didn't like about it was the in enemies when they get low on health they run and they sprint oh, do away. They? Yeah, it's very frustrating. That I there is a game didn't have when I was playing. Yeah, well there is a game that I used to play called EverQuest and yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a lot of enemies on there there is a, there's a mechanic where they got below a certain health level, mm. not all of them, but a lot of them would turn and try to run away and um depending on their health level was their speed. And it, it seemed annoying, but like in dungeons, it's a serious problem because mm. if they pick up speed and run to their allies, then their allies will attack you. So ah. there's like sometimes somebody gets low on health and you have to like snare them to stop. Them. Anyways, that was a tangent. On Velorin, mm. when an enemy gets low on health, they turn and they just haul ass away, like full speed. And it, like it, a lot of times it's like really hilly because it's all, you know, boxes, squares. Yeah. And then you get, you get stuck on the geometry and that enemy's gone. It's very, very annoying. I, I've, if that, like, that's probably my biggest gripe about it. Like, I want to go out and I want to hunt. I want to get hide and craft. Yep. But I go and hit a rabbit, and it's almost dead, and it's just gone. Like, there's oh, no, animals there's do no that, that definitely. I okay, it. I thought you meant um, hostile enemies. Oh no, I guess I, I'm, I'm referring to anything that drops like craftable components. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, okay. The animals definitely always did run. Um. That was kind of annoying. I can agree with that. I thought you meant like, uh, you know, you'd find a skeleton or whatever that would run away. Um, no, <laughs> the skeleton is going to take it to the end. But Wait, uh, it... unfortunately, like rabbits and deer and stuff, they're like, mm. I understand like running away because they don't want to fight. But like full speed, like I can't catch them. I don't have a character that runs that fast. What um, what classes did you try out? Uh, I tried all of them. I found the the magic using class with a staff to be like the most the most capable by yep, far. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, I yeah, found that the bow the, was okay, but magic was the way. I found the melee class like the melee classes didn't play that that well. It felt like one they had no impact, and two hmm. you were always in danger of being hit by the enemy. Like there was not really any any hmm. consistent way to not be damaged. Like you would expect a lot of games to have like a a good parry system, a dodge system, and there is a dodge roll in the game. Um, but it always just whenever I played a melee character, my health would just melt. Mm -hmm. Whereas with you know, you can play a archer, you can play a mage, and you can always just be a, out of that range, and you know generally survive mm -hmm. yeah i did a little melee i liked the two-handed uh, attacks the best yeah yeah and, and they were okay but um most of the enemy killing was done with ranged stuff yep 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 so i mostly just like explored i didn't really do a lot of combat the the world was really fascinating climbing to a mountain and then flying to the next city i mean like yeah, I, I wasn't in it for the combat. I was in it for the exploration. The, the flight and stuff. used to be a lot more broken before they added like a a sensible flight mechanic where you actually like you know fall. Um, yeah, there's there's like wind and updrafts and yeah, stuff. They if if you this is so cool. They did a like a full blog post explaining that they're like simulating way too much with the wind when you're flying. Because um, mm -hmm. previously it was like. It was basically like you were... How would you describe it? The old system is... It, it, you just went where you wanted with the old system. So you could jump off of a mountain... Like, if you went to a tall mountain, you could fly to the other side of the map if you wanted to. Um, which was cool, but it was a little bit ridiculous with how well you flew. Um, mm -hmm. Also, there wasn't full damage when you as well so you could jump from a super high mountain yeah. and just crash into the ground <laughs> that was the quickest way yeah. to get down 
Um, which, once again, was fun, but I do like the way the uh, the flight mechanic works now. Yeah, it, the the flight mechanic was was really, really fun. If you go up too high, then it, it's just like... You just have to play it to get a feel for it. It feels more real than yeah, yeah, yeah. you would expect from a game like that. Mm, mm. Last time yeah, I played, good. last time I played it on stream, uh, I think yeah, one of the devs hopped in. Uh, we jumped on nice. like their their main server, and he was like, uh -huh. "Hey, come check out uh, a couple of the bosses." He dragged me over to the Mind Flare boss. All of us just instantly wiped. Because we all wow. were level one and didn't have any stats. He was like, yeah, come fight this thing. It's like, are you going to help? And he just left. <laughs> Let me know how it goes. Yeah, I did. Fi I found a dungeon. I didn't do any bosses or anything. I mean, mm. these. I want to do more top X videos like that because they're really fun. Yep, if nothing yep. else, just for like, you know, free marketing. Mm, mm. I I want to I want to get these names these games out there so that people can see them people can contribute if they want you know mm, mm. like this really fun so they're not reviews they're just like previews so I didn't mm. I didn't dive too deep um I don't know if I would do like a full review on mm. Velrin it's a very deep there like there there'd be a lot to cover cover you know the problem with Velor doing a review on Velrin is. Like it changes a lot very quickly. <laughs> yeah, that that's a thing. When was the yeah. last update? Let's have a look. Uh oh, okay, so they took a bit of a break uh in November. But they do like weekly updates usually. I don't know what happened with their time off there. I don't know if they just didn't have any contributions for a bit or they were just working on a big update. Uh, but yeah, they do like weekly updates. So no matter what you say, it's probably going to be outdated by the time the video goes out. <laughs> like there's pets now. Wait, it's open what? source for you. Yeah, there's pets. Yep. I'm just yeah, I'm just scrolling through stuff. Oh, there is parrying now. Oh, okay. Take back what I said. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, as I said, like no matter what you say, it's going to be out of date. <laughs> It's a really yeah, cool the, game, though. It, like, I, I it love is. to go back to it every so often just to see how much has changed. Yeah, I would call it a, an, an open source MMO. Because like, you can mm, play it local, mm, yeah. but it, you really should be playing it on, on a server with lots of other people. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. it just feels empty. I think they were... I think I was celebrating like having a record player number. Like, it, not like a massive player number. It was like a couple hundred players, which is... You know, a, a lot for an open source game. Yeah, definitely. Is that all on? Do you know if that was on one server? That was on like their main them? server. Wow, that's a lot of people. Mm. That's great. I don't know if it was monthly active users or if it was logged. In. I think it was monthly active. But either way, it's still like it's a healthy community that exists for this game, which you know mm -hmm. it, it didn't always have. Like I remember if, like hearing about this game as I said years ago, and this was. Not long after, not long after Cube World vanished off the face of the planet, like that was a game that <laughs> Sony was so excited for, and then it just mm -hmm. it just vanished, and no one ever yeah. heard anything about it again. Yeah, I read a little bit about it to understand where Velrin came from, mm -hmm. and yeah, strange, strange history. Because Cube World, if I recall, that was back when. Minecraft was like just starting to get really popular. Terraria had come out, and it was like this combination of the two. It was Terraria, but in three D, which is what a lot of people were kind of kind of looking for. And then they saw the Alpha, and people played the Alpha Cube World, and they're like, "This is really good." Mm -hmm. And then nothing after the Alpha happened. <laughs> It could have been. It could have been another sensation, probably. But if I remember, it's, correct it's not easy to do stuff like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I remember correctly, it was like a husband and wife project. So maybe something happened. I I never properly looked into the story. I didn't even know if there is a story you can find publicly. Um, but that's my understanding of what 
what it was. So it's very possible something happened there, you know. Yeah, the, I, I imagine there's always going to be issues when you go into business with a, uh, someone mm. you're in a relationship with. Well, that's also like, a, I mean, it's a 3D game with a big world for just like a team of two. Mm, mm. That's a lot, you know, Minecraft Mojang. I I mean, Mojang started out like Minecraft started out small, but it, then it grew. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Terraria, I don't know what the company behind it was, but it, it, was, it was like an indie thing, but yeah, it yeah, wasn't yeah. A, like a one man project or anything like that. So it's not surprising that Terraria was became big and successful. But, I know I mean, that. My I th was Minecraft Classic just by Notch. I feel like the first version was a solo project, and then it expanded mm. from there. I can't recall though. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Terraria was made by ReLogic. Did ReLogic start as a single guy? How did that go down? Uh, I haven't blah, heard blah. much about ReLogic at all. That's because they've made one game. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very successful game. Uh, I'm not finding anything super clear. I'm sure I can find it if I did enough digging. Um, yeah. I did, uh, I, you didn't have this one on the list, I believe, but you did show a bit of footage of, um, uh, mm. another game in here of, uh, what was it? A Sonic Roboblast 2. Yeah, that was, that was fun to play. That's that, a you really know what? good game. That was a game that I found out about from that uh, Snap Store stream. Ah, I did not know. Yeah. It was, I thought it was a joke. And somebody in chat, in stream chat, was like, no, 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 no. There's like a whole community around these Sonic uh, fan games. This I'm is over here from, like, what? I've heard from like people who have no idea about open source games. Like This is like the best Sonic fan game. It was really fun. The controls are janky, but I, I could totally yes. get used to them. They are very yeah. janky. But it was it was surprisingly fun. I mean, granted, I only played a little bit. I think I actually played more on that stream long ago, but that's definitely a game. And like Sonic fan games in general, I will definitely explore and go back to. The funny thing about it is it actually feels better than most 3D Sonic games. It's just yes. a third game. Yeah, like, you actually it, feel like you're going fast in a lot of instances, which you don't feel a lot of the uh, the 3D Sonic. It can get a bit weird yeah. in some places, but um, I, I yep. really did enjoy it. I think I stopped yep. at a bit where I got stuck. Um, well, where, what, like, how far did you get in? How far did you play? Uh, there was a bit where I got to, like, a castle, and you'd, like, go over huh? this bridge as it was collapsing. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't That's recall nowhere near. how far I got into the game, um, but I just kept repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating it, and just didn't... It wasn't clicking at all with me. It's like, you know what? Let's not keep doing this right now. Let's go do some, like anything else that it is going to be a little bit more fun for me um let's see if I'm there's fine. also a, a carding version of that as well that i didn't yeah I, I played on that stream but i did not uh i did not show any footage of mm -hmm. in the video but like people who yeah this this has been talked about like just general sonic fans like that's that's how good sonic robo blast 2 is that's how you know in, in GZ Doom and the Doom Engine. What? Oh yeah, it's a it's a Doom. I forgot. It's a friggin' Doom Engine. It's yeah. written in the same engine as modern OG Doom ports. Mm -hmm. Like, wow. Okay. The Doom Engine is a. It is. It is an interesting engine. That's for sure. Yeah, it's again. Software said, "Hey, let's open source this," and people mm. were like, "Give me that!" And now we have Sonic Robo Blast too. Now we do. I love like <laughs> just anything seems possible with the Doom engine. You probably shouldn't do it. Like, there's there are more competent engines out there, but it's one of those things that I think is just always gonna it's always gonna stick around just because Doom has that. It has that, 
how would you say it? That like that classic. There's something appealing about using a classic engine like that that has been used for so many other projects. Even though, you know, it would probably be easier to make it in something else, you could just make it in the Doom engine because, hey, now we can say I made it in the Doom engine. <laughs> you know, if if you wanted to make a game, mm. make a game in the doom engine mm, mm. would you basically just create levels and use custom assets to no craft idea. the game like how how would that work i, I wonder if it's actually i don't know i don't know <laughs> i got no idea <laughs> like i i guess the question is how much hands-on programming do people that make games in the doom engine actually do i would imagine like, I, I really i would imagine i, I, I can't imagine bit. it's a lot you think you think it's a decent amount of hands-on coding i guess it would be easy making to just like look up a game the doom engine let's have a let's see if someone's written it making a game in the doom engine uh there, there is a horror game that is written in g like uses gz doom that oh? is like astoundingly good yeah it's really really good i'm gonna see if i can find it horror i've never really been a big uh horror game fan but i'll definitely have yeah it, it i mean i use i use the the term horror game very loosely okay okay it's it's just like kind of a um very spooky aesthetic is it right. total chaos is that it yeah check out check out the screenshots for this uh, game. This is made two. with GZ Doom. Oh, what the fuck? Let me... uh, I played this on stream briefly because oh. <laughs> I wanted to save it for like maybe Halloween or something. <laughs> Your battery's but dead. It's oh, I mean, like when you when you play it, it. It looks like a game made, you know, maybe in the last decade. Why is Flaps so bad at showing me these pictures? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's having a hard time for me, too. Uh, Total Chaos Doom. Oh, shoot. Yeah, your your camera died. Yeah, uh, I think... Let oh. me go get the other battery just a second. Wow, it actually does look surprisingly good. What the hell? This battery is full, so just just a second. Swap what this. the hell, mate? Okay, there is a lot of stuff in the open source game space I just hadn't seen at all. Like I know about a lot of the like you know the classic games, but this one has definitely uh, escaped my yeah. radar, and probably shouldn't have. Wow. Stop that. Yeah, I another uh, another game I'd love to play for Halloween. Mmm. It that kinda, would definitely it be gave good. me Yeah, it gave me amnesia vibes, but you have like weapons and there yeah, are enemies yeah. that you have to, you know, club or whatever, but the the feel of the game was like amnesia to yeah, me. When you have a <laughs> horror game with guns, it can't really be there's only a certain amount of uh, horror you can really have when you have a shotgun in your hands. Well, you gotta limit the ammo. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Yeah, if you, if you limit the ammo, but then then you get into the trouble of if you limit the ammo, you have to trust that the player won't screw around with it because if you need that ammo for something and the player was just goofing around, then they, yep. they just they broke it. So there there's a way to do it, but. Mm. This is yeah, one I'm total, definitely going to try. Without a doubt, I'm yeah. going to try this one out. Even though I don't do yes. the others. Um, this this seems right up my alley. That's Doom. Remember, like, Doom. That's that's the engine being used. Uh, this is uh, Doom 2, not the original Doom. It, it, but it's GZ Doom, though. Mm -hmm. So it's the same, it's yeah, the yeah. same engine platform. Yeah, okay. Well, right. I mean, like, very advanced, but still. Yeah, 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 yeah. The bones. <laughs> the bones. <laughs> yeah, the so bones of the old project are there. Yeah, that's fair. But it looks pretty good. This looks very, very good. 
Um, <clears throat> got some other. What's this one you show right at the start? Like, I'm I'm not sure what this game is. I like uh, Extreme Tux Racer, Frozen Bubble. Uh, literally at the right at the start of the video, like first second of the video. Oh, that's Extreme Tux Racer. Is that what that you is? You have to know that one. Extreme? Yeah, where Tux is, is walking to the start line and then lays down and starts yeah, yeah, sliding. Yeah. How have you never heard? You There's no way. No, I've never that's heard of like, this one. That's like the seminal open source game that every Linux user has. Ha like, you have to, you can't, you can't be, you, I'm going to take your Linux card away. Everybody I, has to play that and or Super Tux. Like, you have to. It's I've, Tux. I've streamed Super Tux card. Yeah, that's that's a good one. But that's not just Tux, though. That's like all yeah. of the mascots. Mm -hmm. Look, look it. I'm, I'm going to be real with you. Extreme Tux Racer is not good. But that's part <laughs> of the appeal. Like, the graphics are rough. Yep. The, the physics and turning, it's rough. The music is, uh -huh. you know. But it's an experience. You have to understand where we came from. Like, this is... It, this is it's not the oldest game in the world, mm -hmm. but I mean, it was a pretty big deal for the time. It was a 3D game. Like, mm -hmm. it, was, it was a thing. You got to play it. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll play it. You don't have to like it. You just have to play it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you probably won't like it. I'm going to do a bit of a demo at the uh, music. Is like, let's have a look. <laughs> it's charming. <laughs> That's I can, technically I can music. That's technically music. Oh, you know? <laughs> yeah. They it, they did their best. Yeah, it it works. It works. I have played um I have played a uh, Super Tux. I've Okay. So I've played the platformer and I've played the cart game. So got to give me some points for that. Have you played Super Tux Advance? Super Tux Advance. Which one's that? So, that is a, a, a fan game of Super Tux that looks and feels like Super Tux if it was written for the Game Boy Advance. Huh. So, it, it's, it, like, put them side by side and you see the resemblance, but mm, Super mm. Tux Advance plays more like, like uh, a modern platformer i guess it's just different it's faster Ooh. yeah there's yeah, yeah. different mechanics it's it's really fun i think honestly i kind of like this art style a lot more yeah that looks really i cool. i i recommend giving it a try no yeah, no this one actually looks pretty cool as well um like yep. the problem with the 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 problem with super tux is the art is a little bit rough the art's definitely a little bit rough the the art is the art is definitely the weakest part of mm -hmm. the game. The, f the physics, like controlling Tux, is very sluggish. But I didn't hate you, it when you I get used it. to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I actually don't hate it. It's slow, mm -hmm. but it's not bad. Things... It does feel a bit... Uh, I wouldn't say slow is the issue. It, a bit slidey. Obviously, you're on ice. That's sort of the point. But, <laughs> like, it does... It does feel a bit off. This um this Supertox Advance looks like it's a lot smoother in that regard. Maybe that yeah, takes it, away it, the the ice aspect of it. Um uh, no, not necessarily. Okay. It has it has interesting mechanics like you can uh, push down and tux will lay down and mm. slide really fast and kill enemies and stuff that way. Mm -hmm. There are a ton of different power ups. I mean, Super Tux has power ups too, but Super Tux Advance has a bunch of power ups and um, there's wall jumping on there. There's it, it's there's all kinds of stuff going on, but it's tux. It's open source. It's Linux. I mean, like what what else? What could you not like about it? That's fair. No, that's fair. The and it doesn't have the art style issue, so, you know, what is there not to like this time? Yeah. And it's, it's like, active development. New stuff is coming out for it all the time, so... One of the things that did surprise me about Super Tux is even though it's clearly going for, like, the... the Mario-style platformer, the levels... 
like, for the most part, were pretty open in the amount of paths you had. Like, there wasn't just, like, one obvious dead straight path to go. Like, there were always a bunch of different, like, side areas you go through along the way. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I... I, I I, I, I got it. Diff- yeah, it it is cool. I've actually beat Su- uh, Super Tux two mm-hmm. and played like the main Super one, and then played some of the contrib. Yeah, you know, I actually don't know what is Super Tux one and Super Tux two. It, I beat one of them like a long time ago, but um, I didn't know there was a thing called Super Tux two. I maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong here. Is it not Super Tux two? I think it's something else. Super uh, Tux two. No. I, y- oh, I, You've definitely streamed something called Super Tux 2. I've just... What is Super Tux 2? I don't know. It's even on Linux.org, Super Tux 2. Yeah, no, it, it is. Um... Not exactly sure. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Let's get... Maybe Wait, that's it... just what it was called in the repos or something. That's very possible, because it links to the... The main SuperTux website. Maybe it was, it, one of the releases was going by SuperTux two at the time. Mm, that could be. Oh, yeah. that actually makes the most sense. There's an Android version. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. That's yep. neat. Play it on your phone. Play it on your tablet. I think it's coming to Steam. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think so. It's, cool. it's, it's a cool little game. Oh, it's definitely a cool little game for sure. It's um, as, as platformers go, I've played a lot worse. Yeah. It's. I, I would say that the worst thing that the worst thing it has going for it is that you could say it's boring. Yeah, I I didn't find it that boring. But to be fair, I've no. only streamed it. So that is a weird way to play a game in the first place. Um, mm-hmm. If I was to sit down and just play it as is, maybe that would be a different story. Maybe you, maybe you could get into the story of Super Tux as he rescues Penny. Is there a story? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's rescuing the princess. What, I, I mean, s- come on, it's Mario. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Actually, wait, speaking of games that have stories, this one wasn't in the video. Have you played Lugaru? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not in the video because it's not the best. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not one of my personal wait, favorites. It's, it's not, not the one best. of the top five. Lugaru is the mean, greatest I'm, game I'm ever not, played. <laughs> it's, I've, I've made... it, it is an open source game. It is uh, an open it's, source game. It's it's fascinating. It's very interesting. It mm-hmm. is not the cream of the crop, though. I'm sorry. Okay. I know they work very hard on it, but in the grand scheme of things, it's 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 a janky open source game that's any- fun to play, but it's not the best. For anyone just listening, I need to explain the absolute legendary game that is Lugaru. So you are a rabbit that knows Kung Fu and Mm -hmm. it has got this absolute wonky as hell combat system where enemies will just throw themselves at you and you have to like parry everything they're doing but the parry system you can get really good at it. If you're not good at it, though, you're going to suffer. But, like, you can pick mm-hmm. up weapons off the ground. You can throw people. You can, like, do all of this crazy shit. Also, everything it's jumping just... on the moon. <laughs> also, everything like just the... ragdolls everywhere. Yes. <laughs> it's like they went completely crazy with mm-hmm. the ragdoll. You do, like, a roundhouse kick, and the enemy just, like, ragdoll spins away. Yup. <laughs> So strange. But did you know that um, Wolfire actually made a sequel to Lugari that's also open source now? It wasn't open source before. They recently open sourced it. Um, I, I feel like I've heard about a, a sequel, but I know more than that. Or maybe I th- it sounded like it was in development. Is it actually out now? Yeah, uh, it was like... A... It's been in development for like six years, something like that. Oh, actually, it's like a oh overgrowth. Yeah, no? yeah. Is that the game? Overgrowth is the game. Yes. 
Um, they recently open sourced it. Interesting. Not the assets. You still need to like own the game to like compile it. Um, but the engine, all the code behind it, they've open sourced that. Um, but Overgrowth, it takes what was being done in Lugaru and then, you know, brings it uh, a little bit more modern, smooths it out a, a touch. Um, mm. So it's not as jank. It's still very I don't jank. Know, the part, part of the appeal of Lugaru is how janky it is no it's it very janky very strange no it's still very janky it's janky in a very different way but it like they've brought the kung fu system in a way that you can comprehend it a bit more they've also made it more complex in other ways as well um hmm. but like I don't, I don't know how to explain overgrowth but it takes what was being done with Lugaru and sort of it polishes it without taking away some of the jank that made it fun, but gets rid of some of that jank that was just a bit of a problem. Also, it just looks a lot better. So that's nice hmm. as well. Um, I have to take a look at it. It has I, I, what I'll loosely describe as a story. Um <laughs> But <laughs> and the rabbit's name is like Turner or something. something. Like the main character is just a. I mean, Turner's a name, but for a main character, I don't know. There's... Turner the rabbit. <laughs> it's, it's missing a charm that the main character's name needs to have. Yeah, yeah, but like, you're also a rabbit that knows kung fu, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there there are stranger things. That's true. That's definitely true. Um, I I think. At least Lugaru is a game you need to experience. It yes. It's a game that you're probably going to I love or hate, but you need to experience Yeah. whatever the hell it is. Yeah, just go in, get the title, go to the title screen, hit play and just drop in and see what happens. You'll It'll probably be, be roundhouse kicked off the screen and you'll say what is going on and you'll either want more or you'll just quit. It'll be fun until you get to the wolves, because that's it, that's where I stopped too. I couldn't get past them; they're too yeah. strong. Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> like fighting the other rabbits, it's like okay, this makes sense. I can deal with this. But then the wolves, it's like let's just turn up the what? difficulty to fucking eleven. Uh, yeah. They knock you down, and you're just you're dead. You can't yeah, yeah. you can't get up fast enough. You're just I don't know what is going on with the wolves, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, you need to know how to do the rabbit kick. You know, the thing where you like do the the two like the you kick him in the head with your two paws out. Um, mm -hmm. If you can't do that consistently, you cannot beat them. Yeah, and you need to be like really good at like the parrying system and have that all down pat. But you haven't really been given enough time to properly learn it, and because it is such a such a um, distinct jump from going from the rabbits. Like, it's... Yeah, it, it's it's very rough. Very odd, but, <laughs> yeah, you know. It's, it's a free game, open source, it's out there, and you should really give it a try. You definitely should. Um, people keep asking me to go back and play more. We'll go back to Super Tux Car because people have asked me to play a lot more of that as well. I, like when I had last played it, I had just used the um the basic maps, but there's a hmm. a lot more other like, a lot of other maps out there that, from my understanding, should be pretty fun as well. Hmm. I don't think I've ever played on a custom map. I've I've used custom models and mm -hmm. custom mascots, whatever. But I don't think I've ever used a custom map. I think they have a... Did Give they that have, a try sometime. Do they have a list of them? I thought they had a thing to find them on their website. Maybe I'm, misremem I'm misremembering. Um, hmm. hmm. It did get a pretty sizable update recently. Has it been a while did since it? you've played? It's been like a, oh, maybe yeah. a year or so. I think it had a big update in the past year or so. Okay. 
Okay, maybe I have to. Go, maybe I do have to go back. Ah, under the add-on section, that's where it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. under the add-on section, you can find a list of tracks and stuff. Um, no. I don't know if any of them are any good. Um, but people have asked me to try them out. Also, just playing with like different carts and stuff, just you know, different mascots, all that fun stuff. Seeing how that goes. Um, I'm sure it could be fun. I was fun. surprised to see. I was surprised to see the the. Uh, th- since the last time I really played, they did a lot of work to the mascots. And uh, when I beat one of the races as Conky, mm-hmm. he like got out of his out of his cart and was like dancing and stuff. I don't remember that. And when I was driving Kiki, her, mm. you, when I drove her, you could see her tail moving. And oh, I wow. definitely don't remember that. Yeah, it was really cool. Very, again, oh. just like really high quality open source stuff. Just people people doing it because they like it i am uh looking at the list of additional uh carts and someone made an among us cart <laughs> well yeah okay i that that is silly mm-hmm. but it's relevant though you know it like relevant better or worse among us is is a meme of our times mm-hmm. but if somebody's putting among us in the game i mean that's that's a pretty good sign that the game's relevant I wouldn't say it's a good sign the game is relevant, but it's a good sign that, uh, you know, someone has a bit of uh, free time. <laughs> well, at least they're spending their free time on this open source game. That's fair. How about that? Yeah, that's fair. Oh, God, that's loud. It look, Yeah, it looks like it's sort of... I'm looking at it right now. It seems like it has had a bit of a graphics update since I last played it. It looks really good. Yeah, it looks on... and plays really good. You can make it play real badly if you want to. This is another game that I've uh, <laughs> I've stress tested. It's like, hey, how many? Because they don't actually have a limit to the number of cart. There's a limit to the number of carts you can have in an arena, but not mm-hmm. in a race. So oh, wow. you, can... you just have a traffic jam. You uh, if you know how if you have like let's say you have like eight carts, it will like line them up. Uh huh. That doesn't have a cap to it and it will just keep mm-hmm. lining them up going back through the track so you could put like the your server's what? gonna basically instantly crash but you can have like 256 carts um wow and it goes we just just turn that into a uh a, a los angeles highway just sitting there not moving everybody's on the track nobody's doing anything well, yeah, you're not moving because it's running at two fps but i uh, mean like what if everybody t- like, do they do they have AI? Do they try to go? Like, all of these yeah. carts trying to move yeah, is crashing will, into each other. They will try. They will try oh, very hard. Imagine being in the middle of all of those carts and getting a power-up, like the uh, fly swatter power-up, and it's just, like, crushing everybody around <laughs> you, or you're, like, throwing crash. bombs. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be fun to do sometime. There you go. There's your video idea. The, the- Watch me crash the server. The problem with um with doing it, obviously the game's not made to do that. But the reason why it gets so bad is it's a single threaded server, so oh, there's not wow. much you can really do to improve that. Mm-hmm. Like if you've maxed out on overclock, the, well if you've maxed out on the top end CPUs, it's you know adding extra cores isn't going to help you, and that's the way that most CPUs are expand out their their performance so obviously just increase increase your frequency speed that's it it's as simple as that just jack it up yeah there's a limit to the hardware that's available (laughs) but you're not supposed to be (laughs) trying to run with 256 carts play it normally and it runs well (laughs) eh no rules it's better that way yeah you know what it's open source it's your computer it's your server if you want to try to run 250 carts on there then more power to you. I think someone mentioned that in the um the Discord or something or whatever that chat room they were using, and the the one of the devs or one of the mods was like, "Why is he doing this?" <laughs> he does what he wants. I tend to get the attention of um of some of the devs when I try to break their game. <laughs> like this is <laughs> I I've I've said this this before, but um. Whenever I go to, like, a convention that has an indie games room, I'm the guy that's there that's trying to break everything. Like, if you mm. if you show me a game that's not complete, I am going to find what's wrong with it. 
That's good. That's a good skill to have. Some of the devs are happy about it. Others are like, why are you breaking this during my demo? My uh, my favorite <laughs> one, there was a... There was this game where you're on a raft and there's like a kraken that's trying to like attack you or something. Um, the devs hadn't... There's a lot of stuff that, that hadn't been done with that game yet. It, it was not ready to to demo at all. It was in the like very, very alpha stage. Um, hmm. So the map wasn't procedurally expanding. So it was just a square and you could just walk off the square um also no, should, have, should have been prepared for that they they didn't have a swimming system so if you walked away from the raft the water you just progressively keep walking lower and lower and lower and the waves <laughs> just above your head man that's rough i mean for i guess if it's an alpha it's an alpha but... mm-hmm. or there was uh, another one i saw was this um this student project where they're like hey this is this cool like uh prince of persia style game and the first thing that i saw was that uh if i jumped on the wall in a certain way i could jump higher on the wall i just ignore the rest of the game like can i get out of the map here i failed in doing so but i got very close wow oh i'll tell you what when i finally have a prototype of Mm. the eg game ready i will let you play it so that you can break it for me it sounds like you've got talents. I, I tend to break things in uh, commercial products. Like, uh, I think my one of the the most amusing ones for that was when I was playing through the Spyro Reignited trilogy, which hmm. is a it's kind of a buggy mess. Um, no, it's a it's good if you enjoy you know the original Spyro games, but mm-hmm. I would say just you're probably better off playing the original Spyro games. Um, there was a lot wow. of things where, like, <clears throat> you could soft lock yourself in certain areas. You do things in a slightly wrong way, um, not consistently. It was like this weird, weird situation where sometimes you would do the action you're supposed to do, but then the next event doesn't trigger, um, hmm. and you would reset it Those by bugs like. Those are annoying. You have to like leave the level and then go back. I uh, go back into it for it to like properly reset. Um, hmm. There were some cases where you could get enemies to clip into the ground and just get stuck there, which is always amusing. Oh, it makes you kind of appreciate the original game and how they avoided a lot of those issues, especially mm-hmm. like getting stuck somewhere you can't get out of. Like that, I mean, honestly, with uh, with gameplay like Spyro, where like you have to go do these things and then you can go to the exit or mm-hmm. you know what have you. Like, I mean, there's a lot of triggers, a lot of things you have to program, so it's. It's just a different world, you know? Like, for for PlayStation, you rent the game, you buy the game, it's on that disc, that's it. So if there is a game break or level-breaking bug, mm. that you can't ship like that. But now in today's age, it's like, oh, it's buggy, that's fine, we'll just we'll just send a patch out in the next couple months to fix that. It's well, just different now. At the end of the day, like, <clears throat> the game's still going to end up having a lot of bugs. In it. Like, if you've seen any of the... Like Spyro speedruns, for example, you will see that people will break your game in half no matter how well you think you've made it. Um, like, there's a lot mm. of out of bounds stuff that people will use to like complete the game as quickly as possible. Um, it doesn't happen in normal gameplay. Like, this is something where you've got to do this very specific sequence of things and get into a location you wouldn't normally go to if you're playing the game in a sensible way. But there are still these ways that, like, you can you can break the game. And I think mm-hmm. in modern games, there's sort of two approaches that devs take to this. Like, you have something like... Like... In... What's a good example of this? Hmm. There's... I've got, I've got a good example at the... Yeah, I haven't got a good example off the top of my head, but there's a lot of indie games where they will leave the technically broken uh, features of the game in the game because that's something the speedrunners are using because it wouldn't occur in, like, normal gameplay. This isn't something that you're going to... It's going to, like, negatively affect a regular player, 
but hmm. it is something that does get used by the speedrunners. Whereas other games, they want their game to be like as as solid hmm. as possible, cleaning up those issues, even though it does negatively affect those speedrunners by removing it. Interesting. I feel like that that. Yeah, I mean, maybe, I guess for like an indie game or whatever, that that could make sense. But I feel like that kind of taints the the run. If you're using some like broken thing that shouldn't be there, like you're able to attain that time well, because of a bug that could potentially be fixed. There's like different future. categories. You might have like a, a lot of games will have like a glitchless category, and then it'll have like a, ah, a yes. free for all yeah. where it's like you can do whatever you want with the game. Mm-hmm. Like, as oh, long as okay. you're not like cheating or whatever um but like if right. the, if there's a glitch in the game then you could you can use that mm-hmm. that's those usually end up being the the more exciting categories because that's when you start seeing like really weird stuff yeah like in um a game that i'm a big fan of uh have you ever played the jack and axa trilogy no i've heard of it i've never, okay. never really played it um in jack 2 and jack 3 you get a hoverboard and they copied and pasted the code between the two games, and we know they copied and pasted the code because they have the exact same bug. Um, <laughs> you, you can use the hoverboard to... If you... I, I can't remember the exact sequence, but you got to, like, do a trick and jump at the same time or something like that, and you end up increasing your height, and you can just ex- escape any point of the map. And people will use no, this wow. to like skip event triggers and get to event triggers later in the game and skip stuff they didn't need to be doing. Um, yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that is just, it's just really fun. Um, and when a game, when a game has a strong speedrunning community and then the devs sort of encourage that by not getting rid of those those exploits that were being used that weren't affecting the regular players, I mm-hmm. I think that does create a bit of a a bit of a you know positive sentiment amongst that community. Sure. Yeah, I can see that. It's a good thing for the developers to do. Mm-hmm. Like the Especially for like an indie game. Your your speedrunners are the most like they're the hardcore players of the game. They're the ones that are gonna like Regular people will play the game once, maybe twice, but those people who are trying to, like, break the game, they're the ones who are spending, you know, a hundred hours on a three-hour game. Mm-hmm. Like, like, thousands of hours in many cases. Yeah. Honestly, very valuable players for mm-hmm. a developer to have. You want to, like, foster that community and encourage those people. Mm-hmm. Another game that we didn't um, talk about yet was uh, Mind Test. Yeah, I you know the the top ten or the top five, the spirit of the video was to focus on original games, mm. and I mean, Mind Test is cool, but it's not original. It's just a clone of <laughs> Minecraft. Not not to put it down, but you know you could argue that Zonotic is a clone, or whatever. But I mean, Mind Test is like, you want a definition of a clone? Mind Test is that, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's a different category. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. love to have a top five clones, top five game engines mm, that mm. you can use original game data. Like there's there's a lot of different things we could do, but yeah, that's why I didn't really mention Mind Test. No, that, that's fair. But have you actually like played Mind Test to any uh, reasonable extent? Yeah, a little bit. I'd like to. So I host a Minecraft server, and I have for I have hosted it for a very long time. People like it, but I'm interested in seeing what a mind test server would be like because mm. Minecraft has kind of gone, you know, it's kind of like I talked a little bit about Warcraft 2, Warcraft 3. I feel like Minecraft, current Minecraft is just in a direction. I'm, I'm not interested in where it's going. Right. Mind test is very OG. Like it feels like OG Minecraft mm. and mm. it went in kind of a different direction. I think that mind, Minecraft is is designed to appeal to younger folks. Oh, of course, yeah. And, yeah, and Mind Test is just more for like people that like to build maybe more mature adult folks. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, that's just, that's more my style. So I haven't played much of it. I've played a little bit, and I like what I've, what I've played, but I'd like to play more. Yeah, I've Throw only... Mind Test. I've only played a little bit of Mind Test. Um, I know there is some... Uh... There are some 
mod packs to basically just not just there's tons of mod packs yeah like there's i think it, i can't remember what the main one was but it's a a mod pack that tries to replicate everything being done at, at least in like the beta of minecraft um hmm. and a lot of people recommended playing it like that a lot of people when i played the game were saying don't play it just vanilla as is because it is it, it's very much more in line with something like um minecraft classic where it's it's functional and if you want to be building it does that well but as a as a game unto itself there's not really much there without going down the modding route mm-hmm yeah, that's not that's not a bad thing. I mean, it's not a bad thing. I it think is it a great mod make, platform. Yeah, I think it makes even more sense for an open source game to be that way. Mm, mm, mm. But yeah. like there, there is a lot of cool stuff out there for Mind Test that I do need to sort of have. Ah, Mind Clone. That's what it was called. Um, <clears throat> but like and that's the you, mod pack. That... Yeah, yeah, it's the mod pack. But if you just scroll through the um, like. Well, one of the things that that Mind Clone sort of <clears throat> has, like, has a, f I guess, it's not just mod packs. It's like turning into basically a whole separate game. <clears throat> hmm. Like there are total a, conversion. Yeah, yeah. Um, like yeah. the they'll like call them if you go into like the the Mind Test website. There's a whole section for um like custom games. Um, let's see if I can send you this one. Here we go. Like custom mods or custom? Yeah, it's like it's the, they're basically mod packs. Hmm. <clears throat> Whereas like a collection is just like, hey, let's let's build. Like there's a there's a kart racing game. <laughs> I don't know if it's any oh, good. Oh, there's like whole <clears throat> game modes. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is almost starting to look like Roblox, actually. Yeah, it actually like. What the hell? This is not even... What? <clears throat> I'm seeing, like, Roblox game, Like, games from yeah. Roblox in here. Oh, are you? <clears throat> yeah. That's actually really cool. Dang, this will be fun to look at in the future. The Definitely a next year thing. There's so much here. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <clears throat> it just goes on. Parkour? Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. That's great. That's, that's really, really awesome. Can, wait, this, there is a Sudoku game. <laughs> do you do you want to there... play Sudoku inside of Mind Test? I mean, it could be fun. There's a tower defense. There's all sorts of stuff. Wait, this is cool. I must have missed that one. That's that's actually really cool. Tower defense. I I like tower defense mechanics, mm, but mm. tower defense games are usually like I need a bit more than just tower defense levels. Mm. Like I don't know, <clears throat> being able to build a tower defense setup in Minecraft that does sound like fun. It certainly sounds like a uh, a interesting idea, if nothing else. <laughs> Maybe I'll to, next time I play Mind Test, I'll have to like just go with some of these random games that are here. <clears throat> they seem pretty easy to install too. Yeah, I think you just do you just how do I install this? Let's have a look. What do I need? How do you to install do? a Mind Test mod? Yeah, there's like a, a link on the wiki. Um, just games are still using the content tab set up uh, and set up and installed automatically. You oh, so you just download the archive and then like load it in. Oh, okay. So so <clears throat> so check this out. Mm -mm. I'm on Debian testing, mm -mm. and I open up, mm. you know, Muon, Synaptic, whatever. Yeah. And type in mind test, and tons of mods. 3D mm -hmm. armor mod, ad, uh, adventure markers mod, uh, home decor mod. Like all these are in Debian repos, mm -hmm, in mm. the Debian repos right here. Huh. So you you don't even have to. I mean, like if you just want like a basic Skyblock mod is right here. Just install it straight from the repos. Mm. Cool is that? That is really cool. <clears throat> Are there any, like, major open source games that we didn't touch on? Uh, probably. You know, there's always, there's always ones that we forget. I, what I did mm. is I went to Flathub, 
And I went into the games section and I looked for uh, uh, games that I recognize. Games. Let's see. Flat. There's Flat Hub, and <clears throat> uh, I actually like KDE's Discover. is pretty good. You search <clears throat> for games on there. <clears throat> so Let's some see. other ones that that I recognize. Mm -hmm. um, T T Worlds. It's a good one. T Worlds. Um, Yep, T -worlds. T Worlds, Forgato, Forgato and Friends. What is T Worlds? Let's have a look. T Worlds. Um, yeah, it's it's. <clears throat> is a free oh, online oh. moat. Oh, it's a um, it's a worm style game. Mm hmm. That's it. That's what. Yeah. It's like worms, <laughs> a little bit. That's cool. Um, the folks behind uh, Endless OS have a bunch of really cool games on flat hub and why does endless os ring a bell endless. uh endless os is the immutable os Hello. it's it's a cool one but uh, um for a while they were focusing on education and i think that they've changed their focus maybe i don't know i'm not much of an authority on endless os but they have Bunch of really cool educational mm. games: and Nightmare Teddy, Dragon's <clears throat> Apprentice, uh, The Passage. I think White House is one of their games too. You okay. use CSS to paint a house. Oh wow, that sounds yeah. kind of neat. <laughs> it is cool. Oh. Uh, it, as far as open source games, Abuse is one. Uh, Return to Caf Castle Wolfenstein is a total conversion of something. But that's that's a pretty solid one. Open Tyran or Terrain, whatever. Huh. Like Cave Story. Caves. That one's ringing a bell. Cave Story. Cave yep. Story. Why does this ring a bell? Wolfenstein Blade of Agony. Oh, Shattered Pixel Dungeon. That was a good one. I almost Shattered. included it, but I don't. I don't know it super well. Pixel Dungeon. What is this? Yeah. One? That one was fantastic. I will definitely play that on stream. It is a... It is a roguelike. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm listening. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. Well, it's also available on Steam. Huh. Let's have a look. Ah. Let's have a look at their video. Oh, that... Okay, that definitely... This is very traditional roguelike. Okay, this is mm -hmm. not roguelike like the way that a lot of games use it. This is this is roguelike. Mm -hmm. There is you make a movement, the enemies move. Mhm. Mm That's I... right. And there's there's lots of random stuff like you pick up potions, you don't know what they are, you have to drink them first. Just Ah, uh, so it's like yeah. uh net hack in that way. You've played that before. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very so rough you're... game to try. If you... <laughs> For anyone who hasn't uh, hasn't played NetHack, I uh, yeah, I streamed NetHack, and I think I made, yeah. I I I think I survived twenty minutes at the longest. <laughs> like, there's just so much I stuff mean, in that game that will kill you. Like, you drink yeah. water, it kills you. So all the water's poisoned. <laughs> oh, the snakes in the fountain. <laughs> That's a roguelike for you. I think I turned into like a horse at some point. Like I got, I got <laughs> cursed and turned into a horse, or like a. She's like, okay, sure. Very. F you never know what to expect with roguelikes. Mm -mm -mm. But this seems a lot more approachable than uh, just having that like nice pixel art style. Definitely makes it a lot yeah. more approachable. Like yeah, it's a problem with it's uh. Very approachable. Mm. -mm. Like that, that's that's why Dwarf Fortress wasn't very approachable for a very long time. Um, now mm -hmm. they've got their like new Steam version with the nice fancy, uh, no, I wouldn't say like super fancy modern graphics, but they've got a graphical interface that looks modern, and you mm -hmm. can. It, it's not Dwarf Fortress the way that Dwarf Fortress was it, remembered, but it's just as complex. Yeah. I remember when I when I played Dwarf Fortress way like i haven't played in a pretty long time but i would get a art like an asset pack to make it yep. easier to play i just i couldn't i couldn't get into it when it was when it was ascii just... <laughs> yeah 
I mean, that's fine, but it, I don't know. That was a barrier limitation for me. No, it's all right. I felt the same way about NetHack as well. All right, I'm going to rattle off some names for some open source games. You got to tell me if you know them, okay? Okay. I, I, I just found the mother load. Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, here's Lugaru. We talked about that one. Yep. Uh, Assault Cube. Yep, a very fun game. Yep, okay. Uh, here's Mind Test. Ever heard of Pioneer? Pioneer. Yeah, it's it's if it's the game I'm thinking of, it is ve I very loosely like No Man's Sky, and I emphasize <laughs> loosely. I don't even think you can get out, but you have a ship and you land on planets and it, you go through the atmosphere and land, and then you take off and you can go to space stations and. It is defined as a space adventure game set in our galaxy. I'm so you just kind of cruise around and kind so of do stuff. Someone on YouTube tagged it as Kerbal Space Program. Pioneer? Yeah, they, they, just the way that they decided to tag it as Kerbal Space Program on YouTube. Uh, yeah, Kerbal Space Program on YouTube. It seems like it's got <laughs> that sort of that sort of style to it, though. It's like you take off from planet, like do it, but like there's a lot more other things to be doing here besides you know just building rockets. Yeah, it's it's like a whole thing. I don't really hear much about it. It's hard. I found it very difficult to get into because the controls are strange. And right, right. I okay. guess like the whole game is strange. Uh, how about Red Eclipse? Red. Okay, that one rings a bell. Okay, so this is this is another. No, I I, um, I thought I was thinking of a different game. Wait, oh, no, okay. I, was I think of Red Alert? Uh, possibly that's RTS. Yeah, I'm thinking Command and Conquer Red Alert. <laughs> okay, very yeah, different I game. Mean, <laughs> Red Alert's a pretty good game, but uh, yeah, Red Eclipse is built on the Cube Engine. So if you're familiar with like Sour Broughton, yeah, the same yes. same engine. Salt Cubes built on the same engine. Yep. It's, it seems kind of like uh, Xenotic, but I don't know. Different different engine, different feel. Uh, Extreme Tux Racer. Talked about that one. Yes. Uh, have, you ever, have you ever heard of Lyro? Or Lyro? How do you, how do you spell it? L-I-E-R-O. L-I-E-R-O. It, it's a very strange little... I think it's a Finnish game where you play as uh, like these little tiny worms with different guns and the whole the whole level is destructible. Okay. And it's also like... It's really gory. Like when the worm dies, blood goes everywhere. But um, I don't know. It's a pretty old game, but it's fun. It looks neat. So, uh, huh. Who else is in here? Oh, Torx. You know Torx, the racing game? Torx. How do you spell that one? T O R C S. T O R C T O R C S. No, Torque. I don't know this one. Oh. This this is one of the first if not the first open source car games I played and it's it's not bad. It actually looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Oh, I would say like you put it in line with like uh you know the graphics of like some of the very early Need for Speed games. Yeah, it's uh the focus. I believe the focus is on realism, so it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just well it's as just real as fun. as real as you can really get with uh this style that we've got going on here. Yeah, well, I mean. If you think about it, it's, it's easier for a developer to work out the physics for something like this than make the graphics look like, you know, Forza. That, no, that's Because, I mean, at the end of the day, the physics are just based on whatever the game engine can do, and it's just algorithms. Like No, that makes sense. If, if you know how to write the algorithm in the game engine, then it can be just as realistic as Forza. I don't know if people consider Forza realistic, but you know what I'm saying. It's not always graphics. No, I make, that makes sense. Also, it seems like it runs on literally anything. This is I'm watching a video of someone uh, playing it on a Raspberry Pi 400. <laughs> and uh -huh. it's running absolutely perfectly. All right, next up is Unvanquished. Unvanquished. I feel like that one, someone's mentioned that one to me. This, this is a very, very good-looking game, and if I was more familiar with it, 
I may have included it instead of Xenotic because this looks solid. Okay. Yeah, I'll, is I'll this... have to come back to this. Ah, oh, is, is okay. It is the same style of gameplay then. Well, I think it's like one side is humans and one side is aliens. It's, oh, it's, uh... that's the one you were talking about. Yeah, it's like the it's a fork of the one that I was talking about. Ah, yeah. ah, okay. Trim Trimulus. Right, right, like right. Okay. Yeah, so that's Unvanquished. Ne next is probably my favorite mm. open source game, and that is Rocks and Diamonds. Rocks and Diamonds. Yeah, I, I I'm very fond of that game. It's uh. How would you describe it? I mean, it's a puzzle game. Wait. It has... Have I played this? Possibly. It, it's a very, very... It is a very OG Linux game. I believe it was 90s. I've reviewed it like twice. I think I've done like two reviews on this game. I really like it. I might, I might do a third one. I feel like I might have I'm like, played... let me tell everybody... Let me tell you all about Rocks and Diamonds again. I feel like I might have played this... Back in the, back on like XP or something. No, I believe it. Unless it's like it's a clone a of something else. Well, yeah, it, it's a clone of uh, there are lots of games on computers and consoles that are the same style. It's it's like Sukoban and um, Sukoban and Dig Dug, Dig Dug, I think, mm, or Bo mm, Boulder mm. Dash. That's what it is. I, yeah, it's, maybe it's like a Boulder Dash. That, that's what, what I might be thinking of. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I no. mean, Rocks and Diamonds, I think. No, I, I know what I played. Okay. Um, so, you know, in the, in, back when people cared about DVDs, um, there was, you could get like these portable DVD players and as a kid, um, my parents bought my uh, my sister and me one of these so that we wouldn't, you know, bother them when we were on a road trip. And this didn't just play DVDs. It also had a bunch of, like, built-in games. I don't know if they were, like, stolen from somewhere or what the deal was, but hmm. there was definitely a game that was very much like this. I don't know if it was, like, if it was the same thing or if it was just another hmm. game, but there was definitely something on that DVD player that was this, like, this style of gameplay. I mean, like, let's be serious here. It could have been Rocks and Diamonds because it is open source, it's mm. old, and it may have been ported to, like, everything. Mm, mm, mm. So, you never know. Mm, it's very possible. Um... So huh. I'll I'll drop a, I'll drop a last few names here. We got Warsaw, Flight Gear. Presumably, Frozen Flight Bubble. Gear is a flying uh, flight. Wait, I've searched yeah. for Flight Gear before. Wait, do I know what this game is? <laughs> Wait, it's in my it's, it's in my search history. So clearly, I've searched for it before. Um, yeah, it's just it's just a flight simulator. It's it's really cool. Wait, did I search this not knowing it was an open source game? May it, I mean, if you just saw pictures of it, you may not think it was open source. It's there was a. I, I get into you know random um, trends at some point. Like I think there was there was a bit of time where I was looking at flight sims. I, this might have been a game that I just <laughs> looked up. You just heard not about knowing it, it was like, open source. Huh. Okay. I, that that's when you know that that open source is one when <laughs> people are looking up your projects without knowing or caring whether it's open source. Just well, that's that what it, Sonic uh, uh, Blast Two is like. No one cares that it's open source. It's just a good Sonic yeah. game. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Oh, there's so many. They just oh, keep absolutely. going. Mega, yeah. Mega Glast. Uh, Neverball. Open Clonk. Oh man, that's another game that I've done many reviews on. Clonk is cool. Open Clonk. Surge the Rabbit. Surge the Rabbit. Yeah. That's a Sonic clone, like an original Sonic clone. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, yeah. that is very much a Sonic clone. I, I, I saw the preview of the video and it was going around a loop. Yep. Yeah, this is... Yeah. It... 
Wow. Like we have this... Mario clones. This is a Sonic clone. Mm-hmm. And it, it's good, too. It's it's not bad at all. Okay. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, you oh, something list you even drop points. Going. Okay. This is just, yeah, this yeah. is actually just a Sonic clone. It is, Sonic it is literally a Sonic clone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you could, if you just told me this was a Sonic game reskinned, I'd probably believe you. Man, I'll tell you what. I have I have a goal. Mm. Probably won't do it this upcoming year, but I would love to review or make videos, even if they're short videos, on mm. every single game in Flat Hub. Okay. 439 games. Good luck with that. I've always I've so there's a video that LGR did a long time ago where mm. he just like went through the Windows Entertainment Pack games that you would get with like Windows 3.1 and Windows 95 and stuff. Mm. And uh, I'm nostalgic for that kind of stuff, so I liked seeing it. But the I, the concept of like, okay, we're going to sit down, we're going to make a silly video playing all of these like solitaire, you know, hearts, <laughs> reversey, whatever. Like that just seems ridiculous. But yeah, I mean, it's it's video content and it'd be really fun to do. Mm. So I'd like I'd like to do that for built-in Linux games. So like the the built-in games that come with GNOME and with KDE that have just like been there forever. They're yeah. just like meta packages. I want to get those. <laughs> I want to review them. I want to play them all just to have a video talking about them. I can't imagine anyone else has done that <laughs> or anyone else is going <laughs> to sit down and go and do so. So it seems like free real yeah. estate. Let's do it. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, you can go ahead and do it. That's, I'm not going to help <laughs> Might give you some Just commentary some... on, uh, you know, a couple of them, but you can go play the rest of them. Well, I'll, I'll do a video. Um, I t- I'll do a top five car- pre-built-in card games. <laughs> card games that may come pre-packaged with your desktop. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, you probably could. I bet you there's five different card games. Surely there's at least five versions of Solitaire, if nothing else. <laughs> See, Gnome has one. KDE's got one. Then there might be some, like, independent, non-desktop-associated ones. Yup, 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 yup. There was a, um... I don't remember what it was called, but back when I was a kid, I had this... I think it was something like... A thousand and one free games. I've never been able to find what it was. It was one of those like game collection discs. Dude, me too. I had a disc called Games Library and it mm. had tons and tons of games on it. And I remember playing so many of these games for the first time from that CD, but it was just shovelware. There's no way I'd be able to find that exact Yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. But it was just like tons and tons and tons of shareware games. I didn't know some of these were shareware games. I think this might have just just had things packaged Bootlegs. that should not have been there. But, like, there was this RPG that I played. I wish I still had the disc, because there was this RPG on there that I played that I can't for the life of me remember what it was called or anything, uh, like, anything about it besides the game. But it was... This one might have been shareware, because... When you got past, like, the first zone, it was like, hey, if you want to play the rest of the game, you can buy it from this website. Yes. Why, you know, why did that... I, I'll tell you what. Mm. I'm going I'm to announce it here on the show. I am going to release, at some point, I'm going to release EG Game, mm. the EG Game, and it's going to be a shareware collection. Mm-hmm. Because I, I, I don't understand why that, that method died. You know, like, it's not a bad way of marketing, you know? You mm-hmm. make a game, like, a um, a game with episodes or collections of levels or whatever with a narrative so that the users have a reason to, like, want be invested and want to continue playing. Mm-hmm. And, like, th- you release the game free with the first, the first episode. Mm-hmm. And if mm-hmm. people are interested, they want to see more of the story, they want to support you, then they can pay for the shareware and get the full version. Like, why did that die? Now it's all about, like, we'll release a game and then we'll have regular updates and DLC. And it's like, that's so complicated. Why not just say, hey, if you like the game, buy it and you get more content. Done. That's how it used to be. Why did that model die? Money. 
they the they wanted more money and that's not a very yeah see i like why, why I do you know. think loot boxes I, exist uh <laughs> i think that you know loot boxes like that I, that's like a tangent maybe for another time but like it, they can be done well but it's you know it's like it's the golden egg you have mm. the shareholders who are like we need more money okay we'll take the loot boxes and monetize a cra- like it doesn't have to be that way mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. Pe- people ruin everything absolutely um but we are just closing into the two hour mark and it's three in the morning for me so oh dude um, come on it's like <laughs> eight thirty in the morning here <laughs> yeah it'll be eight thirty in five <laughs> hours here um dude <laughs> If the if there's anything else, any other thing you want to jump on before we end it, um, uh, we can do that. Otherwise, I do want to go to bed at some point. Uh, dude, I've got you know I can I can talk and talk and talk and. Well, we can, we do, can do another episode another of this at some point. So there's no there's For no sure. rush there. Yeah, no, I'm good. It was it's it's good. I'm happy. I'm happy about doing this, and I'm happy I did that video because, like mm. I said, I, like I I want to get the work that these people have done out there. Mm. You know, because they're, they're doing it, it's a passion, it's a hobby. And like, as an individual, as a developer, it's cool to see your work out there. You know, mm. somebody's enjoying it, people are playing it. And like, I have a YouTube channel, I've got a platform, I'm, I'm going to use it for the better of the community. Mm. So, and I'm, I'm glad to be here on the show talking to you about this kind of stuff, because it's, it's cool. And I'm glad to have you here. You're always welcome to come back to chat about open source games or any. I'm sure. I'm sure we can find a lot more open source games that we just didn't even remotely oh, yeah. look at today. Oh yeah. Um, if you've got anything in mind that I should try out, I'm more than happy to give things out. Uh, give things a shot, and then we can like chat about those at some other point. And uh, maybe I'll try out some of the uh, the some of the games you listed out earlier, like the the Doom games and things like that, and just yeah. Uh, especially that, uh, what was, the, what was the horror game? Total Chaos. Total Chaos, yes. Um, yeah. N- yeah, now I, d- I do want to say, because I'm sure, I hope that somebody would correct us in the, in the comments. They will, Flat- yes. F- Flathub is, um, I'm calling, I'm calling Flathub, I'm calling the Snap Store and App Image Hub the Linux storefronts. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, that's basically what they are. Yeah. They don't always have open source we're talking about open source games and we're talking about flat hub in the same yeah. sentence not everything on flat hub is open source that we, that's important yeah, um you can find like runescape launcher minecraft launcher i have my uh, my launcher for ff14 is from flat uh flat hub as well <laughs> yeah it mm. would be cool Here's your feature request. It would mm. be cool if there was like a badge or something on the icon that showed that it was true FOSS. Yep, yep, yep. Um, most of what's on there is <clears throat> free and open source, but not everything is. So it's, yeah, yeah. it's worth pointing that out. Yeah, it's not, Man. it's not difficult to filter it out, but it would be nice to have that filter there. Yeah. I mean, if nothing else, just to show like, a little prestige, you know. It's like, hey, this Forgato and Friends open source. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, just, just kind of like I, I, like as a as a connoisseur mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. of of stuff, software and stuff. Uh, I, I, I'm curious, like, how much of this is open source and how much is pri- proprietary? Mm. Just as my own curios- curiosity. No, that that definitely seems like a good. Idea. If any, if anyone involved in a uh, in Flat Hub is uh is listening to this, uh that would be cool. Please do that. Yeah, that, would, that would definitely be cool. I would like that. I don't know if it would... It wouldn't be difficult to do. It would just be a matter of going back and uh, categorizing everything if it's not already categorized. If it is already categorized and you're not, you know, having a... If you don't have a toggle there for it, why don't you have a toggle? There's, there's going to be people smarter than us watching this and maybe they will have a solution. Or they just didn't think of it and were just like, oh, we just didn't <laughs> do that. <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh yeah. well, oh, maybe that is useful. Yeah, or better yet, maybe they just didn't think people would be interested. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, um, let the people know where they can find you and the work you do. Oh, um, you know, the easiest place to find me and my stuff is eg e g e e dot x y z. It's my website. I've, it's like a, right now, it's a link aggregator, and um, if you go there in December, there will be snow. I like to kind of spruce it up. Oh, that's um, cool. But yeah, that's that's the easiest place. I'm on YouTube. 
I'm on, I've got a few different YouTube channels, but I'm on Mastodon. I've moved away from Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, as of, as of the end of 2002, Twitter is melting down. If you're watching this in the future. 2002. 2002? 2022. <laughs> I'm interested to see how this whole Twitter saga plays out. Maybe in a couple of years, people will be like, wait, what? I, I'm having fun watching it. That's for sure. Like I don't yeah. ultimately I don't care what the end result is, but it is certainly fun to watch the chaos as it goes. Yeah, the outcome is is it, it's pushed me to Mastodon, and and Mastodon is really really cool. If, you, if you're not on there, um, mm. if, anybody watching, if you're not on there, highly recommend getting involved in Mastodon. It's very cool. It has pushed a lot of people over to Mastodon. I'm really happy with the uh, the growth that it's been seeing. Like I think yeah. I was talking with uh, with someone. I think it was a couple of episodes ago. It had like a five hundred percent rise in users, like it, monthly active users. That's good, but it can get expensive. So yeah. if, if anybody yeah. wants to support your your instance maintainer, please do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, anything else you want to mention? Mm, no, I'm good. I, I, you know, my content on on the EG channels, but especially the EG channel, mm -hmm. the main tech channel, has slowed this year. Mm -hmm. um, this year, is, I had I moved. I had a lot of stuff going on. Yep. Um, next year, I've got big plans. Not like changing plans, but I want to be way more active, mm -hmm. focusing on making regular videos, maybe streaming more. Um, but yeah, just like stay tuned. I'll be sure to leave all that stuff uh, linked down below. So if anyone wants to go and uh, check it out, go and do so. Um, <laughs> as for me, the main channel is Brody Robertson. I do Linux video six days a week. Maybe I'll do my own open source games video. I'm not too sure. That seems like a uh, a fun thing to go and uh, mess around with. Because my list would be definitely definitely different from, from your list. There you go. Um, I want to hear it. And not right now, but in a video. Yeah, no, I'll have to think think the one through <laughs> when it's not three in the morning. Um yeah. the gaming channel, right now I'm doing a playthrough of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire with Rogue Ren. It is really fun. It is chaos. And we're probably going to wipe at the second gym and restart the entire run. Um hmm. and then the podcast you're listening to now oh the gaming channel brody brody on games that's what it's called this channel tech over t if you're listening to the audio version the video version is available on youtube if you're listening to the wait if you're watching the video version yeah uh the audio version available as an rss feed you can find it on all the podcast platforms out there and yeah go do that it's fun uh, i've got some fun episodes lined up for next year um I'm going to have the creator of Bottles and Vanilla OS on, and there is another one that I haven't arranged yet, but there is another big developer coming on as well. And I want to get some of the... Uh, there's a couple of distro maintainers out there that I've been meaning to get in contact with to try to bring them on, and we'll see if they uh, respond to my messages or what they do. Um, yeah. So I'll give you the final word, EG. What do you want to say? Uh, keep using open source, keep supporting the community, like everybody, like open source is, open source is love and life. <laughs> Do exactly that. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out. See you guys later.